is my pleasure to introduce uh, Ilka Lakso from uh, Alto University, and he has also been doing a lot of work on uh, electric field modeling and also combining that um, to explain uh, physiological responses, um, in that case from TDCS, and uh, looking forward to that presentation. Well, thank you, Alex, for the introduction. And uh, here I'm going to uh, present the results of our, our latest study where we, we uh, modeled TDCS and attempted to, to correlate the, the effects with the, with the calculated electric fields. So this work is, has been done in collaboration with the uh, Japanese colleagues from Hamamatsu University and, and Nagoya Institute of Technology. Basically, our, our part of the work was doing the modeling and the experiments were performed in Japan. But first, I will declare that I have no conflicts of interests uh, related to this presentation. Okay, but uh, let's start with a uh, brief introduction to TDCS. Uh, I assume that most of the uh, audience is already familiar with this. So in, in TDCS, you have a, you attach electrodes to the scalp and apply a quite weak electric current, typically one to two milliamps for, for something like 10 to 20 minutes. And after the stimulation, uh, the direct current stimulation, you can see that the, the, the amplitude of the motor evoked potential has changed if the TDC has been applied over the motor cortex. This is a typical target when we are studying the mechanisms of TDCS. But there are some problems with TDCS. One is that the effects can be quite variable. In the, classically, it has been thought that if you apply anodal current, so that means that the positive electrode is over the motor cortex, it should increase the amplitude of the MEPs. If you apply the opposite current, that is cathodal TDCS, then the, uh, the stimulation should produce inhibition, so it decreases the MEP amplitude. But in, um, in several studies, it has been found that this is not actually the case always, so the effects vary a lot between individuals. So typically the effect is measured as the, as the amplitude of the MEP normalized to the baseline. For, about the variability, for instance, in this study by Lopez Alonso, they, they found that the TDCS produces the expected effect in only about one half of the participants. And in others, it produced the opposite effect or no effect. And also in another study, uh, by Beethoven and colleagues, they found that the, the effect was as expected only in like one third of the participant, participants, so that the anodal stimulation produced increased MEPs and cathodal stimulation produced decreased MEPs. And in other cases, you had different effect, effects depending on the, on the participant. And they, they also studied the different factors that, that could affect the responses or the effect of the stimulation. So for instance, they look at the effect of age, the gender, time, and the, the, the resting motor thresholds and things like that. They, most of them had no effect. There was some effect in the, the latency differences between the different directions of the TMS pulses that they applied. And also the baseline amplitude of the MEP had some effect, but nothing dramatic. So it is still 
un unknown what kind, what are the sources of variability in DDCS and how could they be reduced. The principle of how TDCS works is to attach, attach the electrodes and apply the current. And the current will flow through the head. So it will, it will go through the skull, and then some of the current will penetrate the skull, and it will, it will flow in the, in the CSF. And some of the currents then go to the brain, where they could have an effect. And when you do the calculate, calculations you, and determine how large is the electric field in the, in the brain. It turns out that the, it is something like in the range of one volt per meter. In animal experiments, it has been found that this, this order of magnitude of electric fields could cause some effects on the function of, function of neurons. So in this sense, at least the, the, the DDC seems to be feasible. But here is a possible source of variability in DDCS. Because the current flow, flows according to the individual anatomy, it turns out that the electric field that is generated in each participant's brain is different depending on the anatomical factors. And here are some examples from our, our previous study where we had 28 participants. For, for each of the participants, the, the electrodes were applied in the same way and one, one milliampere of current was used for everyone. Despite the fact that the current was the same for everyone, the electric fields were quite different depending on the individual. You have people who had quite low electric fields in the, in the hand area, and then we have people who had quite high electric fields. So these are the same participants that, that uh, participate in the TDCS experiment, where we measure the amplitude of the MEPs at the baseline and then, then following TDCS. So here you can see the, the response of that each participant next to the electric field. And in our uh, previous work, the idea was to, to see if there is any relationship between the response and then the electric field. Here is again the, again the procedure of the experiments. So we, apply, uh, we took the MRI of all participants, which were then segmented and then used for generating models of each individual that were then used for determining the electric field. The MEP is that they measured at the APV muscle and we applied 20, 30 pulses of TMS before and after TDCS. So it was a double blind and crossover study where we had the active condition and then SAM. Then when, when doing the analysis, I, uh, calculating the electric fields and then then extracting the electric field value at the hand area. So this is the normal component of the electric field at the, close to the center of the hand node, where, where the TMS hotspot for the target muscle is. We found that the electric field, the dependency of the MEP amplitude on the electric field seemed to be negative. So, the higher electric fields you have had in, in the participant, the lower were the uh, normalized MEPs. So there is a negative effect. For some, obviously, there is no effect of the electric field because there was no, no electric field actually existing. So in, in this visualization, the, the 
D part, of the, the right picture is the, is the mean normalized in the after stimulation, as there was no, no difference between the time points after stimulation. So there is a, and, uh, and here this, this axis here describes the increasing electric field value. So people with low electric fields had uh, increased, uh, slightly increased or similar uh, MEP amplitude compared to, to sham condition. And then people with the high electric fields tended to have decreased MEP compared to sham stimulation. So this result was quite unexpected. We didn't expect that the effect would be negative. But actually it turns out that there are studies where they have used 20 minutes or 26 minutes of anodal TDCS, and it produces on average a decrease in the MEP amplitudes. And this could be the reason why the effect was negative. In another of our previous studies, we, we had, which is a, it's a pilot study which has not been published, we had uh, only nine subjects, and for each subject, we we had two electrode locations uh, around the, the M, left M1. And um, so, so we had two electric fields for each participant. At this time, the MEPs were measuring the FDI muscle, and it was 10 minutes of TDCS. In the previous experiment, it was 20 minutes. And the, the results of this experiment showed that there was an opposite effect. So the effect was positive. So the people with the higher electric fields had an increase in the, in the MEP amplitude compared to the baseline. And people with low electric fields had a, a decrease or, or no effect. And again, there was no difference no difference in the effect between the time points after TDCS. So the effect stayed the same regardless of the time point. Others have also done similar kinds of studies, which this was published published this year, just a few months, two months ago. And they, they studied the Again, another TDCS of the left motor cortex. They had uh, four different current intensities for, for 15 minutes of anodal TDCS. And they also found a positive effect of the, of the electric field on the, on the MEP amplitudes. Of course, the magnitudes of the electric field cannot be directly compared to, to our studies because they have calculated in, in a different way. So at least I, there are at least one study with negative effect and two studies with positive effects. And there are also studies which have found, found now no effect. So it is far from conclusive whether the electric field has any effect or on the responses. So the question is that what is the dose response curve of TDCS? As it seems that the results, the effects of electric field can be quite variable depending on the stimulation parameters. The whole idea of calculating the electric fields is, of course, to better target the stimulation so that we can get the desired effect. And also do the calculations individually so that we can, we can reduce the variability. And it is already possible to do the calculations of the electric fields and optimize the electrode locations and whatever, so that we get a desired electric fields. This is already possible. However, the problem is that we don't know 
what is the what the electric field should be to get the desired effect. And there has been some hypothesis of the uh, dose response curve of TDCS. If you knew the curve, then it would be possible to like set the target electric field value to get the desired effect. For instance, in this paper, they hypoth hypothesized uh, several uh, or the hormetic dose response model for the TDCS. It is one of the three, three basic, basic, basic dose response models used in, in toxicology. First of all, you have the linear model where the electric where the dose and the response are linearly related. But now, based on the previous results, this doesn't seem to be the case for TDCS. Then we have the threshold effect, so that when we uh, go above a certain threshold, then, then they get the response. And that would be the, uh, the dose response curve for, for instance, TMS. But for TDCS, the results, uh, the curve might, might be like the hormetic relationship where we have an effect, and then we, when we increase the dose, we, we get a, an opposite effect. So to study the dose, what is the dose response curve in TDCS, we performed another set of experiments. Here is the study procedure. So first of all, we had 21 participants. And first of all, we took their MRI data using a 3-Tesla MRI scanner. And these images were used for the neural navigation system to position the coil, TMS coil, precisely over the target area. And also the neural navigation system was used to position and, and record the location of the TDCS electrode that was placed over the left M1 region. The MEPs were measured in the, in the FDI muscle. And we applied TMS at 120% of the resting motor threshold. And as the previous studies, some previous studies have found an effect of the TMS current direction, we applied TMS in both posterior anterior and uh, anterior posterior directions and measured the MEP amplitude before and, uh, and after TDCS. The TDCS sessions were uh, lasted 10 minutes. We had five different sessions. They were uh, double blind and, and uh, crossover. So it's, it's participant to, to, to part in five, five experiments. And um, so these, these experiments were performed in by uh, my colleagues in Japan. And, um, and my group, we, we did the computational analysis. So we took the MRI and, uh, and segmented them and did the electric field modeling. And in the modeling, we used the exact same electrode position as well that which was used in the actual experiments. It was recorded using the Brainsight software. And after the electric field calculations, we uh, we try to correlate or model the relationship between the MEP amplitudes and then the electric fields. Okay, but I will, I will soon show the results. But at first, I have some notes about the, the segmentation and other methods. So for the 
for the segmentation, we used both T1 and T2 weighted MRI images. And here are some examples of the, of the segmentation. So here's the, the gray matter is here, then the skull is here, and white matter is here. Uh, so our, our segmentation pipeline uses the, the free surfer for generating the, the surface of the brain. And this color is segmented like semi-automatically. And here, here there is one important thing to note when segmenting this skull. It is that in T1 weighted images and T2 weighted images, the thickness of the skull appears different. And here the T2 weighted image gives a more reliable estimate of the skull thickness. So we always take T2 images to, to properly segment the skull. And when, when doing the, after the segmentation, the models look something like this. So we have the, the skull, this is skull, this is the inner surface of the skull. There are also some blood vessels, also gray matter surface can be seen here. And then, then this segmented model is used to generate the, the electric conductivity, which is then used for the calculations. And uh, an important difference compared to previous studies was that we used uh, quite small electrodes. So typically in TDC studies, uh, la quite large electrodes, such as five times five centimeter squares or five times seven centimeters uh, rectangular electrodes are used. But in this case, we used um, circular uh, disks, which had a diameter of two centimeters. So it was a rubber disk, which was attached to the head using the electrode paste. And, and I generated this kind of perhaps needlessly detailed models of the electrodes. And I even measured the conductivities of the electrode paste and the conductive rubber. So for um, Modeling people, these might be useful values, so I get them here. Yes, but next let me show you the results. So these are the calculated uh, electric heat values for each participant. You can see that there is a lot of variability. They have been sorted according to the electric field value in, in M1. So we have the lowest person with the electric field value of 0.56 and the highest value is 1.6. So there's a large range of variability. And here you can see the average electric field over all participants. And for 20 analysis, I found found the location that gives the highest electric field value. And then from each participant, I extracted the electric field value corresponding to that location. So the, uh, each brain was registered to each other using brain surfer, free, free surfer. So these are the electric field values that I used for the statistical analysis. And um, for the analysis, I used a linear mixed model, which takes into account the, the current, the TM's direction, time after TDCS, and the participant. The response variable is the, is the logarithm of the normalized MEP. And then the, there is the effect of the electric field as the effect can be non-linear, not only the linear term, but also, also higher order electric terms were included in the model. And all interactions with the time point and the direction were also included. And there was a separate 
factor that takes into account the baseline MEP amplitude, in which is super y. And there were random intercepts for the participants at the, at the TMS direction. So let me show the modeled results. So first of all, it turned out that the baseline MEP had a large effect on the results. So here's the, on the x-axis is the inverse of the baseline MEP, or actually it's z-score. And there was a very strong effect on the, on the normalized MEP amplitude. So if you had a lower baseline MEP, the, the normalized MEP tended to be higher. And if you had a higher baseline MEP amplitude, the normalized MEP tended to be lower. There were no difference between, uh, differences between current intensities or time points or TMS directions in this relationship. So also the sham had a similar effect. And uh, the reason for this is that the baselines were quite variable. And this is due to the fact that we use 100 to 20% of the RMT as the TMS intensity. Some other researchers have used like the intensity that gives you a, a constant baseline of one millivolt. Here we used the other popular approach, which reduced it in, in variable baselines. And the uh, likely explanation for this relationship is simply that, that if you have uh, some random process, for instance, drawing an ice, and you do the baseline measurement, if you get a high number, then the, for the next measurement, you are, you draw the die again, and then, then you normalize it to the baseline, you, are, you will get the low value. If you draw a small value, then you get a high normalized value as a result. And this explains part of the effect. Well, of course, I'm not saying that the TDCS is just, or measuring TMEP is just throwing a dice, but, but it is, there is still a large random component and which causes this effect of the baseline MEP. It should be considered and removed if possible. So here is the effect of the electric field and, uh, and the value on the y-axis is the residual from, uh, which is the, it means that the baseline effect has been removed from the log normalized MEP amplitude. And also the participant specific intercepts have been removed. So, so on the top row, you can see the MEP amplitude changes as a function of electric field or the posterior anterior TMS. On the, on the bottom row, you can see the changes in MEP amplitudes uh, for anterior posterior TMS. The columns are the time points after TDCS. By visual inspections, inspection, you can see that the curves for all of these boxes look similar. And the same can be confirmed by statistical testing, according to which there is no effect of the TMS direction or no effect of time point after the TDCS on the effect of the electric field. And when you do the statistical testing, it turns out that the, all the co coefficients for the electric fields, the first order, second order, and third order are significant. To simplify the result, I have then pulled the data together and calculated the average MEP amplitude for the post stimulation time points. And here is the result. 
So there's a first, there's an increase in the effect, and then there's a peak after which the effect slowly decreases. The peak is somewhere around uh, 0 0.8 volts per meter. And here, of course, we used uh, four different current amplitudes. So, so in terms of the current magnitude, the, the electric piece for one milliampere would be somewhere around here. And then, uh, then for 0 0.5 milliamperes, they would be around here. And 1.5 is here. Tell you, tell you get the idea, I guess. And uh, so, so from this graph, you can see that there is a, there can be a positive effect or no effect or negative effect depending on where where you are on the on the x-axis. So what are your electric field values? You can also look at the data from a different perspective and, and determine what is the electric field value for each participant that gives the highest uh, increase in the MEP. And when you do this, it turns out that the highest or the electric field values that are preferred by the subjects are relatively low. Um, the mode is something like 0 0.66 volts per meter. So most of, most of the participants preferred low electric field values. And very few of them uh, preferred sham. So it's a, it's a good proof that the, the stimulation did actually something. Okay, but there is some important consideration must, that must be done when you interpret the results. It is the fact that the electric field strengths depend strongly on the size of the electrodes that you are using. Here we were using a small two centimeter uh, diameter electrode, which produces much stronger electric fields than the large electrodes that are typically used in TDCS. And also these uh, different types of electrode produce, produce different uh, distributions of the electric field. So, so if you assume that the optimal electric field value was 0 0.8 volts per meter, it turns out that in, using our electrode, this uh, 0 0.8 volts per meter uh, corresponds to something like 0 0.9 milliamps on average and it depends on the, on the individual. But if you use larger electrodes, you need much higher currents to use, uh, to produce the same kind of electric field value. So it's something like more from 1.5 milliamps to 2 milliamps. And interestingly, these kind of uh, current magnitudes are quite commonly used in TDCS nowadays. And uh, then, then you can also compare the results with the previous studies and uh, calculate what were the electric field values in those studies, uh, their experimental conditions. For instance, the so study published a while ago used uh, ma the maximum value was 0 0.9 volts per meter, which is somewhere around here. And they found a uh, positive effect of the electric field for each of the current values current magnitudes that they used, and which is in agreement with our result, as in this range, the effect is, is positive. And uh, uh, the same kind of consideration can be done for another study, which uh, also reported uh, TDCS results and the electric field as well. They actually found very small variability in the, in the MEPs. Uh, and they found no effect of the electric field. And if you calculate what were their electric field value, it was 
1.1 volts per meters, which is close to the optimum here. So you would expect that there is no effect of the electric field if you calculate the, that the linear, linear dependency. Yes, but one difference to this study was that they, they had extremely small variability in the MEPs. But perhaps the reason was that they used 100 MEPs instead of 20 that we did. Otherwise, the experimental conditions were quite similar to our study. But let me summarize. So, so we performed the TDC experiments in 21 participants. We found a strong effect of the baseline MEP on the uh, normalized MEPs, which is due to the normalization. And then we found a nonlinear effect on the MEP amplitudes. And there was no difference between the different the TMS directions. And uh, this was all. Thank you for your attentions. attention.